All right, all right, all right. God bless each and every one of you in Christ Jesus. Of course, you know this is your brother Ron and my brother. Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. And this is your brother Abinadab. All right, we are soldiers in the kingdom of Christ Jesus. So we want to bring in a very important topic today, uh, a topic that we should consider, uh, a topic that is very, very, very important, especially in these modern days. Um, one of the uh, things that uh, we're, we're going to be talking about today is seminary school, of course. We're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about it from different aspects, and we want to definitely bring out three dangers of it, as you see in the title. We want to communicate um, what it is. Ultimately, uh, it's um, the schooling, in a sense, spiritual schooling, spiritual schooling in a sense. And um, the thing is, you know, we in this world have uh, a desire. Uh, we we have the uh, the want to be affirmed, to be to have the credentials, to have diplomas, to have certifications that, uh, in a sense, justify us to to minister to the people. And so these. Uh, different uh, affirmations or certificates or biblical studies are what seminary is. It's a culture of, of teaching people the Word of God to a degree. And so they take the Word of God and they institutionalize it to ultimately teach people the fundamentals, the um, high things per se, of God, uh, and they attempt to then uh, uh, send them out um, to ultimately create relationships and lead people in in different regard, but ultimately for the kingdom of God. So, but there is a very deep concern, a very very deep concern in reference to. The, the, the types of people that are coming out of seminaries, what they are teaching the people, very critical things that must be examined. And so one of the things that Jesus tells us in Matthew 24 is the, one of the first things he tells his disciples is the disciples ultimately are asking him what would be the signs of the end of the world. What will be the end time signs? And then so Jesus begins to break that, that break that down and talk about specific things. The first thing he says is that there will be impersonators, people that will attempt to come and say that they are Christ or they are the Savior or they are Jesus. Um, and then he goes on to talk about false Christ, false, uh, false prophets, um, uh, people that are are saying that they speak for God, but yet are not speaking for God because they have the doctrine of God wrong. Yes. And so we, we want to communicate some very essential things and examine some things so that we can really be edified uh, on who speaks for God and also um, is seminary something that is for or against the body of Christ, something that is that is beneficial, or something that is, is that is hindering the flow, the the spirit flow <clears throat> of what the Spirit of God wants to communicate and produce. So, um, so yes, uh, I want to go ahead and start with Brother Joseph because we want to communicate uh, and, and and look at this from a holistic perspective. And so, Brother Joseph, I, I, I want you to kind of talk about. Uh, some experiences mm -hmm. as well as some biblical truths to what you perceive one of the first dangers uh, of seminary schooling mm -hmm. is and what we should consider concerning that. Right. Um, well, a part of my testimony, I came to the Lord in 2010 um, and I was evangelized to by a brother in the Lord. Um, this is 10 years ago, of course. Mm -hmm. And so, um, early in my walk in Christ, 
Um, it was one year in the faith. The brother that in evangelized to me, uh, he was considering other books that's not of the Bible, that's not inspired by God, that's not in the Bible, and not of the sixty-six. Books. Not of the sixty-six books. Okay. And he was also going to I didn't know at the time was seminary school, mm -hmm. and so he was considering to read the Book of Enoch, okay. which is a very dangerous doctrine, and. It's another topic for another day on that one. Yeah. Um, anyway, he uh, he went off into that book and other other books that's not in the Bible of the sixty six, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I would say two years later he uh, fell away from the faith. He fell away from the faith, mm -hmm. and I grew in my walk in Christ, grew strong in my faith by studying to show myself approved unto God, like it says in Second Timothy. Amen. Um, you know, and but I was asking around what happened to this individual, this brother. You know, other brothers when I was living in California at the time, um, I was asking around what happened to this brother. Um, and he fell off. He doesn't even believe in Christ no more. He doesn't believe in the Trinity no more. He, you know, other things that was contrary to the Bible. He believed that was opposing. It was opposing threat to the gospel. Mm -hmm. And I started praying for him. Me and another brother prayed for him and mm -hmm. everything. And so years later, by the grace of God, he came back into the faith. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of King Solomon. Mm -hmm. King Solomon, who was one of the wisest, next to Jesus, one of the wisest men that ever lived, one of the richest. And you know, he, of course, he wrote the book of Proverbs. Um, but then you have Ecclesiastes. Now, Ecclesiastes, you can tell he got much older um, because he served other gods. He uh, um, had the 700 wives, 300 concubines, wrote everything, and he, his heart was turned from God as the word of God describes what would happen if you go into the strange women and this is what happens. But mm -hmm. God's mercy was still on King Solomon. Mm -hmm. And so he was much older in Ecclesiastes. All things are vanity. Um, it, it, it goes through, says the preacher, it goes through all the whole book of Ecclesiastes. And I thought about that one scripture, and I'm going to turn to it real quick. And because, like, the, the, the dangers of reading other books, it, it's a serious danger. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes 12? Ecclesiastes 12. Okay. Just passing. There will be people. Right here. Ecclesiastes 12. Right here. It says in verse 12, I'm going to start in verse 11. Mm -hmm. The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, mm -hmm. which are given from one shepherd. Mm -hmm. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end and much study is weariness of the flesh. Mm -hmm. So much study in other doctrines is weariness to the flesh. You, 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 you're setting your mind on other dangerous doctrines, like like those other religions, like that that is false, like the book of like Mormons, like Jehovah's Witnesses, Hebrew Israelites, to just to name a few. Mm -hmm. It will lead your mindset, your way of thinking, astray. And so that's one individual the the brother came back to the faith praise god mm. and i know i know another individual it was a, it was a woman of god um she was on fire for christ she was mm. on fire for christ mm. um the dangers of the spiritual benefits of seminary is when you're on fire for god and then you go to this institution you're learning other doctrines you're taking in other doctrine that's not uh, fit for your 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 walk with Christ, and Hebrews thirteen and nine explains that. Mm -hmm. Turn to it real quick. I gotta go to it. Here it is, thirteen nine. Thirteen nine, right here. It says, "Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have not profited them that." have been occupied therein. So mm -hmm. those other doctrines are strange meats. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, labor not for the meat that perishes, but labor for that meat that endures to eternal life. He, his flesh is meat indeed, his blood is drink indeed, and without it we have no life in us. Mm -hmm. So if you eating strange meat 
you're gonna have some strange, some strange, results. Di- toxic results. <laughs> and so, right, right. The the individual who was a woman of God, um, she got into the seminary school, and then when she started doing videos, I noticed a shift in her spirit that she it seemed like she started losing her fire. Mm. Um, and that's a danger. Mm. That's a danger because of the seminary school. Mm. Um, and um, you know, we lost contact. I no longer contact the individual, mm-hmm. and is you know the Holy Ghost led me to not re- remain, not with this person to fellowship with. Mm-hmm. And you have to do that sometimes, with the, you know, because our salvation is very serious in the eyes of God. Mm-hmm. And so, that's the danger. So that's one of my points. Amen. Amen. So yes, as my brother just testified. There is a lot of false doctrine, teachings, specific instruction that are given by many different teachers within these institutional structures, these schooling structures, these seminary schooling structures. And we're not saying that every single person in a seminary school is is bad or or does not have the Holy Ghost, or we, we are simply talking about the the fact that there needs to be an agreement by the Spirit with the Word of God concerning a particular uh, a particular teacher. Uh, if you claim to be a person who instructs people. Um, under the leadership of God, there needs to be a consistency in your instruction that edifies the body of Christ towards their spiritual betterment. So many individuals, many individuals um, that are teaching in these institutions, as my brother was talking about, are advocating these different books uh, uh, to be studied. He, he mentioned specific books that are within the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha is a collection of uh, books that were written long after the, the main 66 books were established. Now, these we're talking about hundreds of years after the main uh, collection of scriptures were written, these books appeared and these books do not agree with the testimony of Jesus. These books stray away from the personality, from the identity, from the the teaching without hindering the the soundness of 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 God's ways. So these so these teachings are 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 not of God ultimately. There, there are many different things that are communicated in these books that uh, are ultimately sin. They're sin, and they contradict the sixty six books that we know are truth. That we know were inspired of God. That we know. Are, are are led of God and so so the important thing is is for us to not venture off and look at diverse instruction when God has given us the sound instruction so we have uh, not just the books but we have teachings that that come from these books that are hindering the body of Christ, hindering people, uh, people that may have good motives, um, you know, people that go to these schools, they may have good motives to come out with a degree and come out with teaching mm-hmm. um, ability and, and grace. They, they, they may have a calling on their lives. They may have been called to be a pastor, but they were encouraged to go to a ministry, ministry school that is 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 um, it, that is uh, claiming to um, teach sound doctrine, but yet the people come out with all foreign types of doctrines, like there is no hell, or or the the fact that um, you know 
um, everyone, despite their sinful um, actions, right. can go to heaven. You know, some yeah. some some once saved, always saved instruction. They they come, you, you know, they 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 make up. Uh, and, and, and I don't want to say just make up. They t they take the scripture and they abuse the scripture by taking certain scriptures and mishandling them. And as my brother was saying earlier, he was talking about the rightfully dividing of the word of God. This is what the word of God talks about. And so we must, by his spirit, by the spirit of God, rightly divide the word of God so that we can pull from it the principles, the teachings, the right instruction of God and counsel so that we can edify the body of Christ according to what God has prescribed. In the word of God in Ephesians chapter 4, it tells us in verse 12. Oh, matter of fact, I'm going to read verse 11 in Ephesians chapter 4. It says, And he gave, who? Jesus gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for what? The perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with all wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Uh, but verse 15, it says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. And so my brother gave the first point. I'm going to my brother in reference to the, the second point. So the first point was there is not a spiritual benefit because of the pollution within the doctrine. That's one thing that we have to consider, one point. So the second point my brother is going to mention is a character issue. There is a character void uh, that uh, we often see in the people that come out of the seminary. So brother Abinadab, I want you to expound on what you mean by that as well as some spiritual truths to back up what we're communicating. Okay, um, first of all, I was just looking at a definition of seminary and it just exposed something that I never knew concerning the meaning of seminary and it says an institution of secondary or higher education. Yeah. So this is speaking about God's word. How can a secondary teaching come from the word of God which is reality and it's the primary way as Christians that we learn of the character of God and how can it be a higher education I mean God is God created a hierarchy mm -hmm. and he's head of all so how can something that he's teaching us from heaven through first through, through um first through the Old Testament then he sent his son Jesus Christ gave us his Holy Spirit so how can man teach anything higher than three that makes one? <laughs> it's Im impossible. It's impossible. So this secondary teaching is causing people to come out underdeveloped. Underdeveloped, which means that you take on you're taking on a form of godliness, but you're denying the power. You're denying the authority which God has given us so that we can look more like him. We can look more like Christ. We can take on the nine fruit of the spirit, which is the character of God developing our personality that we are able to do the things that God has required for us to do concerning this walk, concerning this walk. 
And um, I'm going to read a passage from uh, Colossians, the book of Colossians, which a call, like my brother said earlier, it's a calling concerning the word of God, concerning the advancing and expanding of the kingdom of God. It's mm -hmm. a calling. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the, the, the apostles that were called, who was ordained by the power of God to teach his word, to help people to develop fully to become a perfect man, like um, my brother just read in mm -hmm. Ephesians, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's done by the Spirit, like my brother uh, point was earlier. It's done by the Spirit of God. Without the Spirit of God, how can you learn? Okay, um, before I continue, knowledge puffs up, mm -hmm. but love, charity, charity, it said not love, it says charity. Mm -hmm. Why does it say charity? Charity is the working of love. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to work the love of yes. God and be able to teach people the truths of God, the truths of the Word of God, not mass perspective that's one thing that secondary teaching brings about it brings about mass perspective of this is what the word of god says mm -hmm. uh from my perspective they, they tell you it's the lord but it's their perspective because yeah, okay. they want to make you feel puffed up they want to make you feel puffed up because when you feel good in yourself you freely give your money <laughs> you freely give your money no jesus say as you freely receive, freely give. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they're not giving, they're not giving the love of God, but they're giving the knowledge of man according to the word of God. Basically, uh, twisting, twisting the truths. They twist, they're twisting the truth. Or they're just giving people uh, Bible basics. Mm -hmm. Bible basics, mm -hmm. Bible basics, which is just knowledge. Without wisdom, without understanding, of the word of God, you can't develop. You can't develop. So um, this is a prayer that Paul spoke over the Colossians. Mm -hmm. and, and I love these two scriptures. Um, it starts off in Colossians 1 uh, verse 9. It says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and, and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. So notice what it says, filled with the knowledge of his will, filled with the knowledge of God's desires. What does God want? What does he want from his people? What does he want from his creation? Mm -hmm. You know, we know he wants, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. So we're seeking the righteousness of God. We're seeking to be more like God. That's what we're created for, to be more like God. He sent us his example, Jesus Christ, a perfect man who showed that in this body we can live godly, we can live holy. He showed that. And that's God's will. That's God's will. It's not God's will that any man should perish. It's God's will that we live eternal, eternal life. But first, we have to be developed. One of my brothers say, um, that's that's so awesome that th here on earth this is an audition this oh. is an audition oh. to get to heaven so a secondary wow. teaching can't can't help me get to the next level Come on. Yeah. only the primary teachings yeah. of the Word of God can help me get to the next level so I say and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. They were that word spiritual again. Mm -hmm. In all wisdom. And wisdom is being able to apply the knowledge of God. Being able to uh, come with, with, with solutions to the hardships that are created for us to develop and not be underdeveloped. That's that's one of the poisons. That's one of the, the dangers of of a secondary teaching mm -hmm. is you're not going to develop you're not going to develop because it's not there's no spiritual understanding it's just um it's it calls it a higher education it's just a, a an education that's saying okay it's a higher education because you uh pay money to go to an institution mm -hmm. it's just like a a, a I, you could call it a Bible college. Mm -hmm. Like people go through um, kindergarten, through elementary, through uh, what's called now middle school, 
uh, through high school, and then you go off to college, which is called in higher education, where you're supposed to get everything that you need to live this life here on earth. So that's what they that's what they are considering a seminary teaching mm. is 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 a, a, a higher teaching that's supposed to give you everything that you need here in this life on earth. But it's not enough. It's not enough because it's denying power. It's denying power. And then uh, verse 10, it says, that you might walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing. And when I was, looked at that word, walk, my brother always say, feet follow focus. Mm -hmm. Focus on Jesus and your feet will follow. So that means I'm being directed. Mm -hmm. I'm being directed by the counsel of God. And yes. God's word is counsel. God is speaking from heaven through his prophets, through his people, through his apostles, his prophets, his pastors, his teachers, and his evangelists. Mm -hmm. He's speaking through this, this five-fold ministry mm -hmm. to help people to develop. He's setting people up who also have experiences, you know, to help people to develop into what God wants you to be mm -hmm. according to the calling on your life. Mm -hmm. According to the calling on your life. So, so that you might walk worthy, and I mean, God's counsel is worthy. Being developed in the character of God is worthy, worthy of the Lord, and to all pleasing, being fruitful, developing in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Notice what it said, increase in the knowledge of God. Speaking about the word of God is an increase. From, we, we love to say, and people coming out of seminary school says it as well, from glory to glory, from faith to faith, but it's only by the Spirit of God you can, you can uh, go higher. Amen, amen. And so this is what we're seeing here. My brother is articulating many things, but one of the essential things that he's, uh, he's articulating is the lack of development in reference to character, the lack of development, the, the lack of true higher learning, uh, the, the lack of what they should be obtaining, which ultimately produces something that lasts, something that is of what we call longevity. You know, we ultimately want our faith not to be temporary, like my, the the examples that my brother was giving. But we we want our faith to be long lasting. Right. We want it to to um, uh, uh, last through the times. We we want it to last um, uh, when, until Jesus comes. We yes. want to be found faithful. We want to be occupying until Jesus comes. Yes. And so these are the things that. God is instructing us to do. And so we have a hindrance. And so one of the things I wanted to point out is because we can't um, just look at it from one side. Let's investigate the other side. And you may ask, what other side? One of the things that we have to also consider is that it's, it's so the, the people who have the finances to, to go to seminary school, we, it may seem as if, no, no, what about the people who make up false doctrines that don't go to, sin, uh, that don't go to seminary school, that um, are not as financially flexible? You know, those, because you can have those who go to a seminary school that are being taught by a system that is ultimately polluted, that produces polluted results. And you could also look at the other side where you have individuals that are, as I was saying, not financially flexible, that just pick up a Bible and, and begin to study their way outside of the spirit, not ultimately producing what God by the spirit wants to produce in them and ultimately become a, a mutated version of Christianity. And so we are denouncing both of them. Yes. We, we are not Jesus. We are not favoring one side over the other. We are saying that if it is not led by the Spirit of God, and how do we know this? It agrees with the Word of God. 
um, as my brother was saying, and it produces long lasting characteristics. It produces the, the love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the goodness, the faith, the gentleness. Uh, it produces the temperance, the long suffering. It produces the meekness, the lowliness. Th there are signs that the, 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 in which the spirit manifests itself through the individual. We have anointings. We have the character. We have the, the different manifestations according to the structure within the word. The word has a structure. Yes. The word has a way. God has a way. Um, the, 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 the Bible talks about how, um, uh, how Moses knew the Lord's ways, I believe. It talks about how there are certain individuals that, that knew God. And, and this yes. results in, an, in a, um, it comes from an encounter with God. This is why the Bible t talks about being born again. This yes. is why the Bible talks about being baptized and, and how the Word of God uh, talks about this fire baptism, this yes. baptism by the Holy That's Ghost. Good. There is something spiritual. There's an encounter that uh, begins to affirm us as soldiers, as sons, as teachers, as pastors, and whatever title you may have. There are specific things that, uh, that justify, uh, give credentials to the individuals. It, it's beyond a certificate. It's beyond paper. It, the solidifying factors um, come in many different categories. And so these are the things that we should be looking for and not whether they graduated from this particular school or whether uh, they can show you a miracle or something. You know, like many people um, can do things, but we, we have to know that God does things uh, by purpose, he does things by his spirit. One of the, one of the scripture, scriptures I wanted to read in First Corinthians chapter two. I'm, I'm going to read it real quick, and then probably going to expound afterwards. In verse twelve, it says, "Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God." which things also we speak not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receive not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Very key. <laughs> but he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord but he, um, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And so what are we talking about? We're talking about the necessity for us to understand that there is an instruction of God by the Spirit that happens in a son of God happens in a person. When we're talking about being born again, we're talking about the spiritual awakening of a person. And there is that encounter that happens. It can happen a variety of ways. Some people, it happens in the low uh, places in their lives. God awakens them then. Or some people, it can happen in the in normal places in their lives and God shows them something great and they leave what where they were and follow Jesus you know it, it, but God ultimately comes in and he has a purpose and he strengthens us with his understanding so that we can advance to complete the mission that was ordained on our lives so now this spiritual instruction is something that God wants to pour in us. He wants to pour in us and he wants to pour in us through people. So there are many different ways in which he teaches us. And so there is an importance of the people that are instructing us. Uh, 
if they if you choose seminary understand that there is uh, many different things in which can harm you yes. in reference to structure that is not breathed of God. Come on. Structure that is not breathed of God. Structure that is not established by God uh, in reference to s certain scholastic type structures and stuff like that can hinder you hinder your development as my brother was saying and as my brother was saying earlier it can make you more cerebral make yes. you more intellectual yep. make you mm -hmm. so head focused that you don't become what my brother was saying in reference to a whole person in reference to character that you can be so intellectual so uh, you can know many scriptures you can have all of it in your mind but your heart not being sensitive and conforming to the pattern of the spirit to the way the Spirit is leading you and unctioning the people around you. And so we have very critical issues with these seminaries. And so there is an importance in understanding what it's saying here in reference to how uh, it's foolishness to certain people, the, the things of God, the, the, the truth of God is foolishness to the mind of man, the carnal, the earthly mind of man, but to those who discern it. So in order for you to, to discern, there is a opening up and enlarging a, an awareness that God places in you so that you can perceive something that is higher than where you are. You you perceive it and then you gain understanding in reference to what God wants you to know and where God wants you to go. And so it says here that we have the mind of Christ. So God has given the believer, the born again, spirit filled, baptized believer, a mind, a, a different uh, uh thought process. He's given that person, one, the desire to see people saved. That's one of the th elements that demonstrate that you have the mind of Christ. You have a desire to see people saved, uh, sanctified, baptized. You, you desire to see people uh, actually make it to heaven. You, you, yes. It's like it's in you. You, you. you breathe that. You want that. You have a burn for it, a burden for it. Uh, another element of the mind of Christ is the truth of God, knowing the truth of God, having a love for the truth of God, having a desire to gain not knowledge for just head knowledge. As my brother was talking about, or I think he was talking about, about being puffed up, not about gaining knowledge for puffed up sake, but gaining knowledge for purpose sake, different, it's a different P, not puffed up sake, purpose, there's a focus, there's a reason why I'm gaining this knowledge because it will be needed of me to give, to serve with freely, as my brother was saying, freely we've received and so we freely give. And so it's very important that we uh, walk in the nature of the mind of Christ. Walk in the the different things that the that the mind of Christ comes to to enlighten us to, and so the school of biblical studies is at many times void of the spirit, void of it, it's a it's reduced to a business rather than spiritual counsel and teaching and edification and 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 edifying of the body of Christ there and so we can tell by the results when you see the fruit Jesus says you will know them by their fruits right yep. when you see the fruit repetitively coming out of these seminaries when you see the teachings 
When you see people posting stuff online, where'd you get that from? When you see individuals saying stuff, um, co-workers at your job or, or someone at the supermarket or someone at the bank, you see them saying things and you're like, I thought you were a Christian. Oh, I am Christian. But why are you saying that? Right. Because that's Christian. Who told you that? Where'd you learn that from? We have so much, and, and we're not just talking about things that are, you know, maybe. We're talking about damnable doctrine. And, and, and this is something that is very key. And so we can't just look, because sometimes some perspectives may be, okay, well, maybe that's not that bad. Sometimes it may look like it's not that bad. But it can lead to greater false doctrines, which lead to heresies, which lead to falling from the faith. Leaven's the whole law. And so it's, ve it's very vital that we understand that it's not about the, the poor man that can afford seminary, but he uh, instead you know, uh, studies the Bible and uh, makes up false doctrine. And uh, it's not about him versus this one over here who has the finances to go to seminary, makes up false doctrine, and, you know, then becomes who he becomes. It's all about being spiritually directed by the Holy Ghost being counseled, being directed towards the true edifying of the body of Christ. This is what we're talking about, Ephesians chapter 4. This is what we're talking about. It's essential. Brother Joseph, go ahead and um, give us some more counsel on this, because we talked about three points so far, three dangers. Brother Joseph uh, example, Brother Bendad's example, and the false prophet example that I spoke about just a minute ago. So, brother, Joseph, go ahead. I thought about the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, how they opposed Jesus um, because they was wondering where did this man get all this, this learning and have not gone to this uh, to school um, mm -hmm. in the context of that. Mm -hmm. And I was reading Matthew 5. I was reading Matthew 5 and verse 13. Yeah. You are the salt, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savior or its flavor, wherewith shall it be salted? Mm -hmm. It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and tried it underfoot but of men. Mm -hmm. So you are a you are you are commanded to be salt. You are commanded to be salt, and how you get that salt is from the Holy Spirit, Amen. from the Word of God. The Word is Jesus Christ, He is the Word of God. His again, His flesh is me and indeed, mm -hmm. and that's how you get your salt. You learn of Christ because He said, "Learn of Me," mm -hmm. and so you stay in the Word of God. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Mm -hmm. The secondary learning that my brother Abinadab mentioned that he did, he gave the definition of seminary is very dangerous. Um, you, if you're Knowledge exceeds, as it says right here, uh, verse 20 of Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, For I say to you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So if you continue on allowing seminary school and the teachings um, to affect the way you think, to, and, and you, you're going to be led astray, you continue to walk in error. And Jesus said it himself. Those are the his red letter words. Mm -hmm. Red letter. It's, it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be not well for you. And we pray. We we're not saying that all seminary school is bad. If God is leading you to seminary school mm -hmm. for his glory, then praise be to God. But if mm -hmm. not, if the Holy Ghost did not tell you to go to that school, then and you went, it, it, it's because of your will. You want your will to be done and not God's will. Mm. And so, Amen. That's all Bro, I have brother Ben and Dad. You know, the main point that 
I'm getting out of this as 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 we teach is that we want to be like Jesus Christ. Yes. And learning, trying to seek more knowledge of what the Word of God is saying by attending a school where the Holy Spirit is not teaching um, is very is very dangerous to your character. Um, I, I have met people that have been to seminary school and then when you're talking to them about the truths of God word about when you when you point out their heart condition mm -hmm. they want to throw that up look I've been to seminary school I mean how do, where, where, where have you been I've been saved for this amount of years I mean where have you been in seminary school if I haven't been in seminary school then then they're saying that I really can't teach you nothing Mm. But you're not listening to the Spirit. That's why Jesus said, hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Yes. Hear what the Spirit is saying. You, it blocks your hearing. Mm. It blocks your hearing. It blocks your sensitivity because you're just lear learning knowledge. That's, that's all it is. It's not the fear of the Lord. It's just knowledge. It's just knowledge of what words say. Mm. And, you know, I just want to... Yes, information, that's mm, it. Information. And I just love to quote this scripture. Mm -hmm. If you know Brother Benedab, you know where I'm going, Ephesians 4. Mm -hmm. But you have not so learned Christ, mm -hmm. if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him, which is by his spirit. If you so have learned him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the formal conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on a new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Yes. Yes. A secondary teaching can't give you this. Mm -hmm. so, so I challenge you, if God was to say, give up that accolade, would you give it up for his spirit? Come on. Would you give it up? Mm -hmm. So the Lord is preparing us by character development, personality development for us, for the for the coming of uh, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So as it was said from, from my brothers and myself, uh, I, I pray that you really consider, you know, those of you that um, are watching and are considering some form of uh, seminary school. Um, uh, or those of you that, you know, are just planning on doing your own thing with the Bible outside of any uh, person with the Spirit of God giving you a measure of instruction or counsel or teaching. Uh, th that's not what God wants to do. God does, can do that. If you wanted to, uh, you over there by yourself with the Bible, God can do that. Uh, but that's not the structure in which we see in the Word of God. That's not, we, we, we can see certain uh, what they call exceptions, exceptions, but exceptions aren't the rule. The rule and the standard is what we consistently see, something that produces uh, many. Uh, something that produces many people towards the, the, the ultimate strengthening and growth within the body of Christ. You know, we don't have the solitary producing masses. You know, we have, uh, or, 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 you know, uh, you know uh, astro astronomical numbers. We have, you know, the people, we have the, the, the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, the miracle worker, we have those, they produce as God, you know, adds to the church, as God, he, he delights in adding to the church, to that spirit-breathed system. That's what he does. Uh, and so God is doing that, and God wants you to be a part of a healthy church. He wants you to ultimately position, position yourself to love him uh, to the degree that you are serious about your faith, that you're serious about your calling and all that God has positioned you and purposed you to do. 
And so we, that we're going to leave you there. Uh, but by the grace of God, we will see you again. So as I always say, feet follows focus. So focus on the Lord Jesus Christ in your feet, our feet. Uh, my feet, our feet will follow in Jesus' name. All right. So God bless each and every one of you. Love you.